I will not listen to a single word Dan says for the rest of time until he gives us his GD top five, top mm-hmm. six. Actually, I don't know why I said top five. I was gonna. I think top four is what we really well, because want. Because you're threatening me, and it's probably not a good idea. I right. want top yeah. six. Top listening. four is what I yeah. think I asked for yesterday. <laughs> I want your top six, and like you just said a word, I didn't hear it because I'm not listening to anything you say until you give us your top six. Mm-hmm. Uh, top la, 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 six. La, la, la. You don't want the top four. So you insist on doing this the way that uh, well, every, yeah. yes. everyone is doing this. Yesterday. Stop talking over people. You mm-hmm. just did that to McGill at the end of the segment. Can, you're not, so you're not going to listen to me and you're going to talk as you said you i don't to. hear you i don't hear you talking. <laughs> right, right. Okay. you spent all of yesterday taking making the case for every team and it got to the point where i was like dan do you have 17 teams in this top six so i want to pin you down i know it's hard to do that but i'm doing it right now do it all right you know what uh chris cody i want you to have more power in the company i want you to be able to threaten Thank you. me and not listen to me well, you want him to listen, though. No, I, I want... <laughs> but stop I, interrupting. I want Chris Cody. I'd prefer that, but that's something I'd probably level at everyone in our company. What's he saying? I can't hear him. Yeah, anything. okay. All right, I'll do this. I'll do this. Really? Do you, do you guys Whoa. feel like you got the board ready? You're going to be able to keep up with me? Because I'm going to do this fast and furious and give you information that's good. Let's You're go. going to stand up and give us your college football playoff right, right now? That's right. Just wow. like... Just like Steve a. Smith. We're going to okay. do it just like Stephen A. Smith and Mad Dog. I'm going to play to the camera here. We're going to put up this here. We're going to. I'm the committee. Whoa. I'm the committee. Committee. Uh. Yes. Here we go. Now, yesterday, yesterday, I gave you already that Washington's my number one. I love Washington, so we're not doing this list right because I've already given away number one. That's not the way to do this. Obviously, <laughs> I told you that I love them because their offense throws the ball deep and they beat everybody. They play exciting games. Their quarterback's got a great story. I'm rooting for the story. I'm Number listen- one. I'm listening now. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, after all this time, I would think the money would make you do it, but okay. Ah. Number six. Are you ready, Stugatz? I am ready. Number six is Iowa's defense plus USC's offense plus James Franklin, but only in September. Only in September, wow. right here. Number six. That's right. Oh, no, that's a perfect team. Yes. A combination of teams. I like that. Because I was thinking about sending Texas's offense and Florida State's defense because Florida State got robbed and calling them Flexus State. Not your How list. About that? <laughs> Not your list. Flexus State, though, was worth it. Stop trying to take this list. All right. Sorry. This list right here is being brought to you in part by the Greg Cody Show featuring Greg Cody. Thank you. With, with, yes. With, with, with fun. The yeah. podcast that everybody needs to be listening to. That's right. Money well spent, too. Like the way it's going. I'm going to go to number two <laughs> okay. here. Whoa. Are you Out ready? Order. Are you ready for the number two team wow. in the wow. land? Exciting. This is second only to Washington right here. Ole Miss. Wow. Ole Miss Whoa. is the second. Wow. Oh, wow. Because we love losses around here. They lost to Georgia. They lost to Alabama. The only teams they lost to. Good losses. Good losses. <laughs> good losses. Nothing better yeah. than Very a good, good loss. Yeah. Yes. Quality Great, say, loss. Nothing better. Great loss. I'd Combined say. 60 points. The CFP the right. taught us anything. It's had a win. Uh, a perfect season doesn't really matter as much as a good old fashioned good loss. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Been telling yeah. us. Yeah. Got to lose right. <laughs> Number three. Bama. Because they just got to be it. Yeah, yeah, they got to be it. No, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Yep, yep. We agree across the board, too. Yep. I mean, what are we going to do? Not put Bama in? <laughs> 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 yeah. Who would do that? Who would do that? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, get out of here. <laughs> I'm going to suggest that. Number five. Number five. I'm going to suggest that. Number five. Are you ready for number five? Oh, boy. Wow. Where could attention. this go? Wow. You have to understand, Stugatz, his, his wife, his whole family was here uh, just moments ago, and they were all complaining that Stugatz wandered around his house all weekend saying again and again, <laughs> if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's not in the college football playoff. But it is at number five, sort of, if number five next year. <laughs> if there were more than, if year. there were more than four teams, because Stugatz, do you have any guesses why it is that I'm going with the ducks here? I have no idea, Dan. I don't even want to venture a guess. Oh, that's the ducks logo. I thought that was Iowa's point total. Sorry. <laughs> that was unnecessary. That was it was good. good though. I think it was very necessary. Yeah. No, it was not. Greg Cody, you got any idea why it is I have selected the Ducks here at number five? Uh, A tribute to Mario Cristobal? That they're even better since he left? I have no idea. (laughs) The theme running through some of this is two quality losses 
Ah. To Washington. Oh, nice. Wow. Very nice. Wow. Very nice. Wow. Very nice. Wow. Yeah. Criteria. Quality, just not quality wow. enough to get into the final four. Mm -hmm. And are you guys ready for the big one here? Uh. Because this is the controversial one. Yeah. This is who's going to get in here. Yeah. I assume you're going to right a lot of wrongs. FSU could get in here. Has to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, it could be Georgia, right? Could Couldn't be Georgia. it be Georgia? Georgia. How about Texas oh, State? Yeah, I mean, it could be Ohio State. Yeah. Well, Texas. it can't be Michigan because I told you yesterday Michigan's out. They cheated. Yeah. <laughs> like, they cheated. Well, I assume Only this, way they beat Iowa. I assume this is Texas. New Mexico State. Oh! Oh! The Aggies? Nice. The Aggies. Oh! oh, my God. Big Auburn win. Yeah. And Auburn... Almost beat Alabama. Oh, yeah. <laughs> almost. 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 They almost did it. Almost. Almost. So close. Yeah. Almost did it. it. So close. Yeah. I think the best team here might be our sixth seed. <laughs> yeah. We love the transitive property. <laughs> is it or is it Stu Gotch's team? I think I won Flexus State. Flexus? <laughs> no, the, no the, the, the slight edge goes to James Franklin, but only in September. Oh, it's great. It's, I, I, first three weeks of September. If you really <laughs> narrow it down. He's got you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm all out of material. That's it. Does anyone here play a lot of Grand Theft Auto? I imagine Tony does. I imagine some people in the other room do. But I don't know that anyone in the shipping container is big on video games or would help make this the most popular video game of all time when it releases in a couple of years. I used to with the one that was the edition that was two previous editions ago. So that was quite a while because it's been a while since a new GTA came out. But I wasn't really a story mode guy. I just F around with my friends online and, and immerse myself in these worlds that they've built. And with this new GTA that's here based around Miami, modeled foot by foot after our great city. Foot. I cannot foot. wait for that to happen. <laughs> Uh, yes, modeled. Uh, f I can not believe it, actually, Greg, how much it looked like the parts of Miami that I live in, how much it looks like my weekends in Miami, what I see on the streets because of how accurately they captured the total insanity. How good are we with the artificial intelligence around here? Have we gotten we worked a lot on this. A lot of people are wondering why we went to Hollywood. It'll become increasingly clear in the next few days. But one of the things that we did is to get savvier with our artificial intelligence how good are we with the new equipment mike on being able to if i ask you hey mike if we wanted to make our characters in this world with artificial intelligence fit in grand theft auto <laughs> how quick are we now with the machinery with our ability studying things we've put like we've put the video team under it in a couple of uh, for a couple of months now how good are we at getting artificial intelligence immediately so that we could work with this equipment faster and better? Industry standard type good. All right. Well, let's test that right now. I'd like to see, I'd like the video team using whatever it is, and I'll filibuster a little bit for them, using whatever it is that they use in order to get our characters to look like Grand Theft Auto. I'm being told it's already ready. Industry no, that, standard that type. Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? I don't Amazing. even need it. Industry standard. All right, so this is me right here. This is, uh, <laughs> this, is <evid> this is evidently me. Okay, um, very hairy You chest. wish that was you. I, uh, do I? Oh, a second me. Oh, that's there, better. There, oh, there, wow. there that's more like you. There are two Miami <laughs> me's. Excellent, both of them. I urge you all oh, to. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at Stu. Stu looks good. Wow. I, I wish that was me. You've been working out. <laughs> Stu got steamy. I urge you all to watch on YouTube here as Baby. our artificial intelligence. Roy just said he looks like Roberto Luago, and he does. <laughs> Lou. Uh, let's, uh, I can't wait to get to Roy. Let's see what we can form oh, for God. Roy. But before we do that, uh, let's see Mike Ryan. I'd like to see, if you don't mind, I would like to see what Mike Ryan looks like in Grand Theft Auto. They make wow. us all beefier. They make us all stronger. Uh, physically more imposing. I'm being told that I look jacked. I, I don't believe that. That's certainly before the Ozempic. <laughs> Everybody so far looks jacked except me. I look just uh, inflated and sort of greasy. <laughs> Uh, let's, uh, Greg Cody, no, if we, let's not. Uh, yes, yeah, let's do let's Greg not Cody do as a grand Love it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is Stanley. That is, that is, that's, that's what you want to look like, Greg. Right? That is <laughs> not Greg Cody. <laughs> that's like, uh, you look like if FDR sang for Motorhead. <laughs> really? Uh, Howard Schnellenberger back in the day. <laughs> Greg Cody is always delighted when anything is about him. Even look when at, it doesn't look like him. 
It's so ridiculous. Uh, let's see what Roy uh, what Roy has uh, here. Uh, oh my God, Roy! Wow. Oh come Roy. on, Roy! Oh, Roy! Wow. Roy's, uh, <laughs> Roy's delighted because that's that is the actual guy who threatens everyone and and wants to beat everyone up and is <laughs> yo mama and don't say anything. Keep my name out your mouth and there he is right there. I'm being told our industry standard AI equipment has already made a Chris Cody version as well. Wow. Really? This can't wow. be good. All right, let's see. Uh, oh. Oh, Andy Dalton. Dalton? Wow, the red right. rifle. All right, wow. that's a lie. <laughs> all right, so maybe, out. maybe it's not that good. Wow. Christopher's wife's going, all right, let's go. <laughs> so is yours. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> right that. You did look a lot like Stan Lee. Again, put behind me if you guys. If, that's great. Yeah. It's so good. If you guys don't mind, speaking of what people look like uh, today versus what they're going to look like tomorrow, I do want to circle back around to how much better Mike Ryan's dad looks at the same age of Greg Cody as Greg Cody. Put that behind me so that people can see Mike Ryan's dad in the penalty box with uh, Stugatz. Uh, look at the difference there between right. how it is that these two people look. Evidently, uh, Greg doesn't like this as much as he likes the, the AI of him as Stan Lee. Well, that is a very flattering photo you chose of me, so thank you for that. <laughs> Did have a shot. That was a very smooth forehead on my dad. Very smooth. Are you Almost being too smooth. accusatory there? Of no, the- he, he told me in a very proud voice at lunch yesterday that it's been several months since his last Botox. Ah, uh, see, I'm all natural, so, <laughs> you know, what you see is what you get right here. We, yeah. don't, uh, we don't do the talks, you know what I mean? <laughs> or the bow. Or the, or, or the 80. <laughs> uh, Lucy, you, you told us that the SEC championship game was a tad disappointing in terms of tailgating. You're headed to Army-Navy next. Do you imagine that tailgate is nuts? Like, what that, what's that tailgate going to be like? I heard that they had more demand for tickets for this game at Gillette Stadium than they did the Taylor Swift concert. So I'm very, very excited for this. I'm nervous that these military men are going to behave and be like, we don't want to talk to you on camera. That's the only thing I'm afraid of. But I'm very excited. I think it should be super, super fun. And it's in Foxborough this year, which is different. If that had more requests than a Taylor Swift concert, this is about to be completely and utterly insane. Lucy, how can that possibly be? You were told that. Did you verify It's Army-Navy. I know, but it's... I saw it online. I didn't verify it. Mm. It Proud doesn't. Of you. It, it seems you. like a good. Uh, it seems like a good thing to say that it can. It can no way be true. Like there's not it, the the mm. toughest ticket anywhere in entertainment is Taylor Swift. Well, CBS Boston that. says Army Navy game ticket demand greater than Taylor Swift. Yep. Boom. Oh, I yep. trust CBS Boston. Yep. Boom. They're they're just playing that Taylor Swift algorithm. They're like, we put this in the headline. This will get clicks. Jeremy, there can't be numbers that support that. What what I sense? Mean, I'm looking for Boston. I mean. Is I think it, it was Robert Kraft who said it. I mean, is it because we're doing the same math of people paying $7,000 for a toilet seat the way the military does it? Robert Kraft said, I can tell you that the ticket demand for this game is greater than any AFC championship game that we've hosted here, greater than Taylor Swift. Wow. Malarkey. I bought 12. <laughs> Lucy, uh, tell us about the SEC experience and the video that we are about to watch now together that you gathered as you were. You had It didn't seem like you were having quite as much tearful fun as you've had everywhere else. You can't cry in a press box. Press box. They'll kick you out if you do that. The tailgating seat was not good, but the game was so awesome it made up for it. Uh, Juju joined me, and it was super, super fun. But, yeah, I was a little disappointed. A little disappointed. Let's throw to that video, that disappointing video of a disappointed Lucy. Oh, look at that. You are, you are, you got it both. Honey. I'm beating the system. I love it. I Can't love it. You lose if you play both sides. I know. I, 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 my microphone's prettier than yours. Hi, Dan. It's me, Lucy. And guess what? Brought a friend. Hey, Juju. Cheers, Mike. We are in Atlanta for the SEC Championship game, and so far, kind of underwhelming. Yeah, very underwhelming, a.k.a. thunderwhelming, because it looks like it's about to pour at any second. But me and Lucy have poured ourselves into Atlanta, and we are here, baby. We wish people were drinking more. I thought this was the (laughs) SEC's whole thing, alcoholism. I'm in the middle of some East Coast, West Coast beef right here. Please do not bite my head off. How do you feel about Georgia fans barking all the time? All right, hang 
It's as annoying as the gator chomp. Really? <laughs> if you got a mortgage, put it on the tide, because the tides go roll today. I'm going to sell my house, sell my car, might even sell my kids. And I'm putting it on the dogs, not only the wind, the dogs to cover. He got the belt. Go dogs! Go dogs! It's about to be the best shit ever happened in college football. Oh. A three-peat. We are the true SEC. I just want a prediction for today. Okay. Georgia, of course. Yeah. I mean, duh. Yeah. Duh. Alabama ain't got a chance with Georgia. Where's Stugatz? Where is Stugatz? We got him a we gift here. Hey, tell him there's four replacements here from Canada. How about them f***ing dogs? Roll Tide, baby. Go dogs. Roll Tide. No Peace. SEC. 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 I know you are following you. Do you think Jim Harbaugh belongs in jail? No. no. We have seen as many Michigan fans here as, I, I won't say Alabama, but close second. <laughs> Those motherfuckers are here to cheat. Do you guys think Michigan should be allowed in the playoff? They're a bunch of cheaters, right? Oh, exactly. Yes, no. Yeah. Yeah. Hell no. No. And now Deacon Hill has to take them down. Are we, is it safe to say that this is the dog's dynasty now and, and Bama's time is over? Yes, it yes. is. Yes. Georgia thinks that they're the new they're the new dynasty, but it's always we won Bama, right? Yes, it's always. Like, people hate Bama for a reason, because we're the best. If you could tell Nick Saban one thing, what would you tell him? Oh, you're just a wannabe Kirby Smart. Kirby Smart will always be better than you. And if you could tell Kirby Smart one thing, what would you tell him? Remember who spoon-fed you, remember who raised you, and remember who your father is. That is Coach Nick Saban. He is your father. Back to you, Lucy. I could have been in Indianapolis watching Iowa potentially lose by 45. But we gave that up to for the SEC tailgating scene. Sorry about that. <laughs> and I thought this conference used to stand for something. <laughs> it just means more. <laughs> this is probably the worst tailgating scene we've seen the whole year. <laughs> like, worse than USC. Everybody needs to get with the program because George is here to stay from now until forever. Go dogs! This video was presented by Liquid IV. Rehydrate like an athlete on game day and wake up feeling refreshed tomorrow. Use code Lucy for 20% off at liquidiv.com. And go dogs! Or roll tide. Well, a united front. Yeah. It was so much better before the game started. Yeah. Be like, first. Put it on the poll, Juju. More annoying, Florida's chomp or Georgia's barking. Uh, Stugatz, I do want to be serious about uh, something here, just as it relates to the confusion around Michigan and how much of an advantage they actually gained. Uh, I'm assuming that Harbaugh is going to be in the pros soon. I'm assuming that uh, there's going to be a whole lot of talk about Harbaugh, no matter what happens in the next few games. And I want a genuine appraisal from you guys. Stugatz has been really tough on Harbaugh for, for a while. The entire time he's been in Michigan, Stugatz has just been ripping Harbaugh. Do something. Do for something. For not winning. For not beating Ohio State, okay. which he didn't do early on. All right. But right. now Harbaugh has, but he hasn't. Because he didn't beat Ohio State this year. Like, I really legitimately want to know. He did last year. What credit he gets. Yeah, but. He did last year when no one knew he was cheating, and he didn't this year when everyone knew he was cheating. So I ask you genuinely, because this guy's going to be a pro, and he's going to be able to have job choices here. I'm asking all of you genuinely, how much credit am I supposed to give to Jim Harbaugh as a championship coach if they win the championship, but he's not coaching half the games and all he's bought is disgrace upon the program because all of us have been talking all year about not their players – 
We do not. Man, this has been so different. You complained. Colorado, we spent the whole year talking about their coach and not their players. Yeah. But at least the coach wasn't cheating. The coach wasn't actually doing something that got him banned from more than half the game. So I ask you guys the question because – He's going to be celebrated. He's going to get a giant job. He's going to be able to do whatever he wants. And I legitimately have no idea how much credit to give him for winning that conference when they're just running the ball all the time. And the one wide receiver, Marvin Harrison, is the one that you got to beat in order to get to the championship if your defense is really good. You got to, what you have to do all season is just beat Marvin Harrison one time in a really close game. And we'll put, no, whether you cheated or anything else, we'll put you in the championship round. It's a weird situation where you want to give Jim Harbaugh credit because he did build this roster three years ago we were talking about Jim Harbaugh being on the hot seat we thought that Michigan was going to fire him after the COVID year because they didn't look good and he's completely turned that around so you have to give him that credit there but he's also been gone half the year he's been gone half the year and the second that this playoff is over whether Michigan loses to Bama wins the national championship give it three weeks before he's openly flirting with NFL jobs well that's the part right is he's almost definitely going to go get an NFL job after this. Because when these runs happen, like what's happening for Michigan right now, where they've dominated the Big Ten for the last few years, you don't really see that sustain all that often. Even, I mean, look, Georgia just won 29 straight games, but then they missed the college football playoff because of one loss. If you're Jim Harbaugh, you got to capitalize on this moment where you still have not a pristine resume, but one where people are looking at you as one of those great coaches when, as Lucy just mentioned, just a few years ago we were looking at him as a guy where it was like, has the game passed him by? But he puts together a few great recruiting classes, beats Ohio State a couple of times, and he gets to stay at this level despite the fact that he was cheating the entire time. It's pretty funny, is it not? Uh, it so is funny, but you want a pie chart. Is that what you're looking for? I, I love a good pie. Because I would give Jim 25%. I would give Sharon Moore 25%. I'd give Connor Stallions 50%. I mean, that's how I would do it. The NFL's loved Jim Harbaugh forever. I mean, Stephen Ross went to meet with him when Tony Sperano was the coach, right? I mean, that, and that's 10 years ago or something. This is a new and unimproved Dan Levitar show with the Stugats. Gamble on by DraftKings. Was... International Cheetah Day. Tyreek Hill has, I think, nicknamed himself Cheetah. Maybe he uh, gave, maybe, I don't know whether he gave himself that nickname or he just uh, took it and ran with it. But you tell us, please, what it is that's special about the Cheetah. What is, beyond obviously it being faster, all I know about the Cheetah is that it's faster than all the other animals. But what else is to be known about the Cheetah? Well, it's the fastest land animal. It's not the fastest animal. The fastest animal on Earth is the peregrine falcon. That can dive, it stoops at over 200 miles an hour. The cheetah is the fastest land animal. It'll go from zero to 60 miles an hour in less than four seconds. Uh, the thing about the cheetah, though, is it cannot sustain that kind of speed for any length of time. They tire out very quickly. They're not an incredibly powerful cat. People look at them. If you look at their paws, they're very different than most other cats in that they don't have totally retractable claws. So their nails are semi-retractable, and they're always kind of sticking out. They look very much like a dog's foot. And there's a reason for that, because those claws are basically used just like cleats, just like an athlete. So maybe that's where it also came from, the, the nickname Cheetah for Tyree Kill, because the cheetah makes such quick turns. It's so very you know, rapid in the, in the way it runs its routes, so to speak, that it uses those claws to dig in so it doesn't slip. Um, but again, it's a fairly weak animal. It has very weak jaws. It's not capable of taking down massive prey like lions, or tigers, you know, jaguars, some of the bigger cats. Um, and it's a chicken. The cheetah is a chicken. It doesn't want to have conflict. You'll rarely see a cheetah have a fight with any other animal. It might spit and kind of flail its, you know, paws at you, but the first chance it gets, it's going to run away from any kind of conflict. So they're not necessarily a, you know, a, a very powerful animal. They're a beautiful animal. Their spots are all different. I mean, they're just like, hey, you got the picture of the claws. Boy, you got that crack team there. Um, they're, um, you know, their spots are very different, just like fingerprints. No two cheetahs have the, the same spots. And people also notice that tear line that comes down. And that might be another thing that relates to athletes because that tear line, uh, cheetahs are diurnal predators, which means they hunt during the daytime as opposed to lions and leopards and most other big cats that tend to hunt, hunt at sunset or during the evening time more nocturnal. And they do that because they don't want to have any conflict with those animals. Those animals will try to kill cheetahs. Um, and they often do get killed by things like lions and hyenas and leopards. So um, that tear line is to make them be able to see better in the broad daylight. It's kind of the same way athletes put that dark line under their eyes to help deflect the, the uh, sun glare and make them better able to see the prey that they're chasing. You often did uh, 
talk show hits with a cheetah, right? I, when I think of you, I think of you photographed with a cheetah. You had like a go-to cat of yours. Any funny stories about traveling with that cheetah? Well, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I remember staying in a hotel in, in Chicago and, um, you know, I bring the cheetah in the hotel room with me and um, it was a very nice hotel. Um, they Did you decide which bed? <laughs> it usually sleeps in a big sky kennel. Um, there was one cheetah, Savannah, who I let sleep in the bed with me. And that's kind of a long run of joke. Sure, you had a cheetah in the bed. Got it. Anyway, but the bottom <laughs> line is most of, most of the cheetahs stay in their crates in the evening when they're in the hotel with me. But I had this cheetah out walking, a big king cheetah. And um, I had ordered room service. <laughs> when I opened the door, the cheetah was right behind me. And the guy dropped all of the food all over the place. He panicked. He thought he was going to die. And, you know, it was just a cheetah. Ron, what is the second fastest <laughs> land Wait animal? That guy, probably, for a second. that guy a, probably still thinks about it, that. It's day. a good question, but I don't want to just skip past like Ron McGill shrugging because room service was like, yeah, there shouldn't be a cheetah. That should be in the wild. It shouldn't be in a hotel room. <laughs> like, you're sitting there saying, what's the big deal? It's just a cheetah. Anybody would react that way. Well, the good thing is I didn't get charged for the extra food because the food was on the floor, so they had to bring me some more food, but they didn't charge me the extra food. I apologized to the guy. I said, listen, it's not going to hurt you or anything like that. Uh, you know, he didn't speak a whole lot of English, and he was very flustered. He, I, I felt badly for the guy. I really did. Why Why were you – did you just say, though, that you did actually snuggle and sleep with a cheetah? Did you just yeah, say Savannah, that? Savannah, our first cheetah, she would sleep in the bed. You know, I'm going to send you guys the picture of Savannah and I watching Monday Night Football <laughs> from a bed in, in, uh, in a hotel in New York. And we were watching Monday Night Football. She used to like watching the TV. She'd sit in the bed with me and watch the TV kind of curiously. Baby. <laughs> yeah. So, Ron, I am curious who the second fastest land animal is and whether it would be a competitive race. Uh, it wouldn't be a competitive race as far as uh, endurance goes because the second fastest land animal would be some type of gazelle. Uh, you know, one of the gazelles, probably 45, maybe closer to 50 miles an hour, but really 45 miles an hour would be the fastest they could go. But they could go that distance for a lot longer than a cheetah can. So the cheetah has to depend on the element of surprise and then the first few seconds being able to make up that 15 mile an hour difference to be able to catch the animal. Would the ostrich rank in the top 10 of land uh, animals speed wise? No, no, an ostrich is probably about 30 miles an hour. Uh, there's a lot of animals that go over 35 to 45. That that bridge of 35 to 45 is a ton of antelope and deer and lots of animals. Ron, these Joe Rose spiders are becoming a problem. What do we need to know? Joe Rose spiders? Joe Rose yeah, the big spiders. dog. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The big dog. Are they <laughs> dogs or spiders? Oh, check them they're out. Spiders. They're parachuting spiders. They're scary, and they're attacking the East Coast. <laughs> well, listen, here's the bottom line, Stu, guys. I got to take everything you tell me with a grain of salt because everything to you is scary. Right. Uh, uh, these are, yeah, they're, they're spiders that are being introduced and they're showing up and, you know, they're not going to kill you. They're not going to come after you or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, but, it, but it is a spider that uh, doesn't belong here. So I think it's just another additional problem that uh, the, the United States has. And it's very similar looking actually to the banana orb weaver, the orb weaver spider, or the banana spider. The females usually get much larger than the males, as it is in most spiders. Um, also in birds of prey, a lot of people don't realize the females are larger than the male. And in hyenas, too, as a matter of fact, the females are larger than the males. So you have some species of animals where it's contra uh, contradictory to what you would think. You know, males are usually the bigger, stronger one, and that's not the case in, in spiders. It's good. I have a snake video to play for you. That, of course, is the big dog, Joe Rose, uh, salivating Joe over, Rose spider. over blue cheese and chicken wings. <laughs> We have a snake video to play for you here. Uh, if you could do some play-by-play -play on a, a, a cobra fleeing a mongoose and eventually ending up on a uh, on a golf course somewhere. Give yeah. us uh, give us what you have here. Yeah, so this is, you can see the, the, the snake is going back and forth, trying to disorient the mongoose. The mongoose is just kind of sitting still. Oh He's God. just waiting for his attack, okay? And the mongoose will instinctively go for the head of the cobra. My suspicion is that this cobra's out in the open. This cobra's going to eventually be dead. Uh, I don't know the outcome of this video, but I can tell you if there's a mongoose out there and a cobra's out on a golf course, I see the mongoose coming in the back. And uh, the snake with the, you know, cobras do is those are specialized ribs behind their head. They flatten them out to make themselves look larger. Ironically, they won't actually face the mongoose many times. They turn their back to it so that the monocle on the back of the cobra, the flap, you know, the back uh, of that hood back there looks like a big eye. And the snake thinks it's going to scare you away by waving himself back and forth. So it looks like that big eye is moving. But what happens is, um, that mongoose is eventually going to go out there 
and just quickly grab the head of that snake. One quick bite will disable the snake. Usually goes right into the cervix, uh, you know, the, the uh, cervical spine, and just snaps it so the snake becomes literally paralyzed, and then the mongoose eats it. What would you say in terms of the things that happen that you have witnessed or just find fascinating from the animal kingdom is the most fascinating of the ways that these animals uh, square up against each other? Because what you just said about the cobra is fascinating, that it turns around and spreads its back like that so that the mongoose thinks it's a bigger animal with a bigger eye. Exactly. Waving back and forth like it's trying to taunt you. Um, I'll tell you one thing that happened that was just mind blowing to me. I'll never forget it. I was in Africa and I was watching a pool and a giraffe went down to drink. A full grown giraffe went down to drink. And then all of a sudden out of the water came a massive crocodile, grabbed that giraffe's head and dragged him into the water and drowned him. I mean, it was one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. Um, when you're talking about a giraffe, and literally the giraffe initially just lifted his head up like this, and the crocodile literally came out of the water but wouldn't let go of the giraffe. Then the giraffe fell back down. Once it fell in the water, the croc dragged him in the water, drowned him, and, you know, probably fed on that giraffe for the next several days. Ron, how does the snake, going back to that monk, the, the other one that we saw on the golf course, how does the yeah. snake know that it has what looks like an eye behind it? It's an instinct. It's an instinct. Um, what they're also doing is they're probably keeping their head away because they know the head is what's vulnerable, especially with the mongoose. It's got to bite that head to kill the snake. Um, you know, you're probably thinking, well, yeah, but the snake's also got the fangs with the venom. The, the cobra strike is not that fast at all. I'll send you guys some pictures that you can play next time we're on the show of me with cobras right in front of my face when I was grabbing them because they're really... Now, listen, that was not a smart thing to do. I was stupid. I was young. Uh, fortunately, I never got bitten. But they're not as fast as people think. You would never do that with a rattlesnake, for instance. A rattlesnake strike is a split second. Cobra strikes are usually very slow and kind of uh, almost indicated before they actually strike. So they do that to kind of protect their head, make their, their you know, that, that, that hood look bit really big and to scare you away. Animals don't want to have physical contact. They want to avoid that at any expense, so that's why they do all of this kind of gesturing to try to scare you away before that physical contact is necessary. Thick. Mm. You met your wife after being bitten by a crocodile or alligator, and mm. uh, when, you, a crocodile. Uh, when you think of dumbest things you did because you were arrogant in your youth with animals, what is the dumbest thing? Uh, that was the dumbest thing. Not, not getting bitten by the crocodile, but doing the things that I used to do with cobras. I used to do a show at the zoo that was, uh, you know, my first job was working for a gentleman named Bill Host at the Miami Serpentarium, a legendary man who actually injected himself with snake venom to get his blood to develop antibodies so he was somewhat immune to the bites. I didn't do that, so I wasn't immune to any bites, but I was still trying to do the same thing that he did by catching these cobras, hand-catching co hand cobras on stage, and I was living off the adrenaline. You know, the, the crowd was screaming. They thought I was going to get bitten. They thought I was going to die, and I'm just saying, this is just great. All these people are going crazy because you're young and you're stupid. And that was a dumb thing until my director called me in the office and told me if he ever saw me doing that show again, that he would fire me. <laughs> uh, I want to show you some more video here. Tell me what is happening in this video that's in front of you. Give it uh, play by play so the people who are listening via audio uh, get a full picture. Yeah. <laughs> Stop, Joe. Okay, this is a two children. Oh, and they're looking at a beluga whale. A beluga whale, a big white whale, and this little girl. Oh my God. And the and beluga obviously sees the child, and animals will react to children often more than, than adults. So this child now is just, and the beluga is actually transfixed on this little child. You see this massive big white whale on the other side of the tank, and the kid looking up there. And when the beluga comes around and opens his mouth, it goes, boom, it scares the kid. Kid, oh yeah, kid goes back and it's fantastic. Yeah, that's terrifying because the, Tried the to eat it. if I that mean, glass weren't there, it looks like the beluga whale is either about to eat that child or just screaming at that child. Yeah, and it's just you know I think the beluga whale is having a little bit of a sense of humor there. No, uh, no, 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 that's a reach. No, 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 guys, I'm telling you, animals <laughs> have that. I've seen the gorillas here. Every now and then we have a cave that you go into and bring you up to a, a pane of glass where the gorilla can come right up to the glass. And, you know, our gorilla sometimes will just lay down there like he's asleep. And when he sees people come right up to the glass, he jumps up and hits the glass. And people scream. And I can kind of look at that gorilla's face. He's kind of going, <laughs> these foolish people. Uh, do animals laugh? What animals laugh? I, I think animals, I you, know, know. You, see, you see it in chimpanzees. You see it in some primates. They do laugh. Um, the laughing hyena is not a laugh <laughs> like people interpret the laugh as. It's more of a, uh, a nervous call. Um, but uh, animals, they smile and they laugh, not necessarily in the same ways we do, 
but in other types of gestures that they do. Did you just say hyena? I did. Tomato, tomato. Okay. <laughs> tomato, uh, potato. Let's play uh, one more video here. I don't believe a lot of people know how fast the hippo is. Uh, yes. The, uh, the, the hippo uh, does not swim. It runs on the ground in the water, correct? It's that good. is correct. Uh, so look at this video here. Uh, is this fast moving or is this just that, a is, that, that is very fast moving and it gives you an idea of how incredibly agile these massive what appears to be lumbering beasts can be. And I try to tell people all the time, you think a hippo's huge, it's too fat to be moving around quickly. When they get up and start running, you think they were made out of styrofoam. They're looking, running literally so lightly on their feet, it almost looks like they're gliding across the, the uh, you know, the terrain. Live they're look. phenomenally fast and hippos kill and injure more people in Africa than any other animal in Africa. Live look at Dan leaving the studio. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's the, good. Uh, the percentage of body fat on the hippo is what versus muscle? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, we stumped him. Uh, is the hippo yeah. fat or is the hippo muscular? Well, it's obviously got to have a significant amount of muscles in it to be able to run the way it does. Um, just in the jaw muscles alone, they have massive jaws. You know, sometimes at zoos, you'll see them, they'll feed them whole watermelons. They take the whole watermelon in their mouth and it just pulverizes it. So it's it's pretty powerful animal. But there's obviously a big layer of fat. They're what's called a pachyderm. You know, pachyderms are hippos, rhinos, elephants. And pachy means thick, derm means skin. So that's the thick skinned animal. So they have a big layer of skin there that I'm sure has a certain layer of fat underneath it. A big day for Ron McGill and Greg Cody, uh, both of them. Greg Cody, look at him. He's interested again in the show. We're talking about him. We're talking about The Pride of a Lion. The book releases today. A substantive amount of proceeds go to uh, Ron McGill's uh, substantive endowment, uh, The Pride of a Lion. Anything you want to tell the people, uh, Ron? You have now read the book, correct? You've read it now? You're yes, I've read it uh, actually twice. Um, and Greg did, Greg did a great job of kind of, you know, relaying my words into, into words that people can read and enjoy. And I think it's, a, I, you know, I'm really proud to be part of this project. I feel in, incredibly lucky to have been chosen to do it. There you go. Look at Chris kissing the book. That's, That's really right. Nice. Uh, it's good that we had the camera on him and not Mike Ryan yawning. Thank you, uh, Ron. Good talking <laughs> to you. Good seeing you, buddy. Mushrooms. Take care, guys.